Down speed. Marker. Action. Check, check. Check one, two. Son of a Down speed. Action. And hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another True Audio Presents. This is a very special one. Today we're live with Jason from Shure to talk about a brand new product that they have, the ADX 5D. We have a commercial, is that right, Jason? We sure do. We'll kick it off with uh, showing this bad boy off a little bit. Let's do it. So I need to start off by saying thank you for this beautiful jacket. You guys, it feels so good. We'll get to the product. No, I'm kidding. We'll get to the product right now. I want to say thank you. Beautiful. We've been all wearing them. We love them at the shop. Thank you. But today's video is all about the ADX 5D. Jason, there it is. It's there it a is. It's a beautiful portable receiver with built-in Shure Axion digital capabilities. Talk to me about it, Jason. Why don't we start with what is Axiant Digital? I mean, I think we should start there, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a great starting point. I know there's a lot of people that know Axiant Digital, and maybe you don't. So, you know, Axiant Digital are uh, Sure's flagship uh, top tier true diversity digital audio system. Uh, it's been around for uh, a number of years here. Really, uh, you know, made its claim to fame in, in live audio, sound, a little bit of broadcast, and now we've. Uh, we set our sights on the location, film, and, and television markets uh, with this slot and receiver. Uh, so really rounding out the ecosystem of Axiom Digital, there's a large suite of transmitters I'm sure we'll get into today, one for pretty much any application you can think of. Uh, but at its core, Axiom Digital is uh, you know, a fantastic top-tier wireless solution for your wireless needs. Yeah, so there's some photos here. Here's the, the dual and the quad rack nut receiver. Uh, which were the initial offerings for Axiom Digital. Uh, we've got um, a bunch of body packs and transmitters, as I mentioned, and then today we're dropping this two-channel slot receiver. So it really is pretty much everything that you have in the two-channel rack receive receiver um, outside of some of the connectivity options in the back based on sizing, right? But uh, true digital diversity, 140 dB of dynamic range, um, there are three bandwidths. The, the main one that we talk about is G57 or A band, and it's 470 to 616 megahertz. So a huge spectrum availability for all of the devices here. You don't have a, a certain bandwidth of transmitters down here and a certain bandwidth up here. It is one wide band system. So you get a ton of RF real estate, you get immaculate sound quality, and you get really robust true digital RF. 
one of the things that I love, Jason, about the ADX5D is the integration, the form factor of this device. And it's not a toy. Like, we need to start <laughs> off by that. Um, it is so durable. I mean, it's machined. Is it, what, what, what is the metal made out of? Is it aluminum or what is it? Uh, it, it is a very strong chassis. That's a great question. Yeah, I, uh, all metal construction is the is the line that I guess that we have, but it is it is robust. This everything thing can take a beating. A sure That's what I'm getting at for sure. Yeah, everything we make at this level of product is really really stress test in a ton of environments. Uh, you know, we've got an immaculate real world scenario testing facility in Chicago at our headquarters that puts this, these products through a range of, you know, humidity, heat, moisture, all the things that you're going to encounter out on location, wherever you may be, drop tests, um, you know, the, the R&D and then the um, quality control is, we pride ourselves on. So, you know, it's not a product that is going to break down when you need it the most, um, and it will function in all of the elements. Absolutely. I think it's extremely durable, and I think it's even more versatile. If, if we really got into it, because you're, you're, like you said, if you guys go back to the, the receivers that you had before, the rack mount receivers, you're getting all of that guts into something that can like slot into a camera or into an ENG bag or into, you know, some of the electro, you, you know, the, the rack receivers that we use. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it is a very versatile system. And now what we need to do is talk about the versatility of, of the software and especially about Showlink, because I think Absolutely. that is what really takes this to the next level and why everybody's really getting stirred up and excited about it. Tell me about Showlink. Yeah, my favorite example today has been, uh, you talk about size and what we fit into this little package, right? So mm. I love to show this device. This is the AD610. This is the current device that you need for Showlink connectivity with our rack mount receivers. Uh, and if you, you can see, you know, the size of this and it's POE powered and, you know, if you're talking about going on tour or installing something, it's, you know, it's very easy unit to install, but we've taken that entire piece of technology and crunched it down into somehow inside this. And there's your little Zigbee 2.4 antenna on the front uh, of this receiver here, right? So you talk about taking a lot of technology and crunching it down into this little box here and to, to fit that form factor that is so relevant in this film and TV and, and remote audio sound, location sound um, industry. Absolutely. And so what is Showlink? For those of you that don't know, Showlink is our 2.4 gigahertz um, Zigbee protocol back channel remote control for transmitters. So essentially, if you have a um, Showlink enabled transmitter, any parameter that is on that transmitter from the gain, from the frequency, from RF muting, um, any of those parameters that you would need to set or change, you can make all of those changes remotely, wirelessly over the air. Um, and you can do that virtually instantly. Um, so, and then the next level to show link, especially when you talk about this slot form factor, is that that allows you to integrate this, this you know, two channel slot receiver into all of our software. Uh, so we have wireless workbench, which is the um, PC or Mac version of software. And then we have uh, Channels Plus, which is the iOS, iPad, or Android software, um, both of which are free to download. You can go download those right now for free. You can get that software. They do some amazing things cross products, but really they really shine when you get showing devices connected to them over you know, the wireless link that exists. And I can remote control all of those transmitters and devices from my iPhone or from my MacBook and you get this amazing ecosystem of controllability and easeability um, and function. Absolutely amazing. I think one of the follow-up questions that a lot of people are going to have from Showlink is, you know, okay, so we're, we're receiving on UHF and we're remote controlling with the Zigbee protocol 2.4 gigahertz. Yep. Um, talk to me about range of well, both the, the UHF as well as remote control. Do I need to get closer to the Showlink in order for the remote control to go out? Talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. So we spec um, uh, 300 feet for both, really. 330 is the, the UHF transmitter and 300 is what we spec for showing. Um, you know, this is all industry or um, environment and physics dependent, right? As is all things RF. So uh, if you have a ton of noise floor in your 2.4 space and that's not well managed, then, you, you know, you might have some difficulties there. This is not a magic, uh, a magic tool that solves all your problems. But 
yeah, assuming that you do the basics of coordinating your wireless, um, including that 2.4 spectrum, you should see uh, equal uh, or very close to equal range of the UHF transmit and the Zigbee transmit. Um, they should be almost the same anywhere that that, that transmitter goes, uh, assuming that you've deployed your um, show link antenna in the same way, or that you've got the same line of sight as you do if you're talking about a, the bag receiver. Um, you should have almost the same range. Okay, and I guess, you know, it just kind of depends on the application of what you're doing, because, you know, if you're working on a cart with the the rack-mounted receiver versions and you yep. have a show link, in yep. theory, you could remote that if you needed it to be farther, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, 100%, right? We see people that, some people have early adopted these, these rack mount receivers and built carts, and some people leave them on their cart, some people put them on their remote antenna tree, which is a very common thing to do, right? And so... The 610 show link is run on PoE over one cat five. Um, if you are don't have PoE or you need to remote uh, power that device for some reason, it does have a DC power input. And you know we're talking about this 610 here. Uh, but really, you know, I, we see that people take that. these take these whip antennas off uh, in bags, even right, and connect them to a small DA and and put up an external antenna. This is removable, right? This little stubby antenna here. So if you want to break it out to a more directional uh, 2.4 antenna uh, to increase your range, obviously this RF is, you know, there's, it's not black and white. There's shades of gray for all of your environments. But we try to give you as many tools and options as possible as the end user to say, hey, I, I want to manipulate this or I want to pull this lever. I want to add a 2.4 antenna to this device. You can do that, right? You can break it out uh, and make those adjustments. That's perfect. I think it's the best of both worlds because let's face it, when you're working in a portable bag, you may not necessarily need to have that infinite range capability. So like you said, three to 400 feet, my God, if you need more than that, wow. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, and Hey, you know what? Let's, let's go worst case scenario. You've got to get a little bit closer. It's sure. significantly less close than going to take the pack off the talent and having to interrupt them and remove it and resync and do all the things that you you normally had to do or have to do currently, right? So, exactly. uh, you know, we have to be honest about the luxury we're talking about here. And, and what that really translates to is that, you know, you should never have to touch your talent again once you mic them up, right? And really you should never have to sync a transmitter again. Once you sync it and it's in the system, every change you make should automatically go to that transmitter and there should never be another sync again. So you combine those two pluses like the range conversation becomes almost irrelevant because it's yeah. so much better than what it used to be, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about monitoring. How do you monitor on the ADX5D? Fantastic question. Um, so the analog outputs on the back or through the DB15 or DB25 will pass AES or analog. Uh, and then on the bottom, there is this fantastic headphone jack right here, 3.5 millimeter. Um, comes out the bottom, you can put that into whatever monitoring device you're going to be using. Uh, and then that jack is um, programmable. So you can decide through a multitude of menu options on what you want to be listening to. Um, a mix of one and two, just one, just two. Uh, there's a tons of options in there to give you uh, the proper monitoring output that you're looking for. Very good, very good. Uh, yeah. And you know, I also noticed that do you have a USB plug on the back of that as well, just to jump Correct. to that. I'm assuming that's for firmware updates, et, et cetera. Can it be used as a sound card connection too? I know that's gonna come up. It cannot, nope. Okay. That is strictly for firmware updating the USB-C on the bottom. Yep. Very good, very good. What about battery powering options for this? I think we're gonna have to start talking about the different sleds and the different bottom pieces that can go on this. Yeah, so the great graphic pulled up right here. You can see the, the two ports on the bottom. Uh, and then the, the image in the middle is our um, L or NP type battery sled um, that is available that offers uh, use with the common L or NP type batteries that we see in this market. Uh, and then the picture on the right is our cold shoe mount. So um, I have one of those kind of set up right here. This is what that looks like in, in real world scenario. Um, so I've got a very large NP battery on top there. Obviously, we make the, you know, they make them in smaller sizes. Uh, and then that cold shoe mount on the bottom. So there's your mounting options. Um, there are two slide points for this L or NP battery types. Um, and that is just so that you can hot swap your batteries as you get lower. It doesn't require two batteries. It just gives you the option to go ahead and put a second one in and then pull the first one. And you can continue recharging and never have interrupted power. Incredible. You know, we actually have a yeah. question from the uh, from the audience here uh, from Citizen Doug. He says, Shure recommends encryption to improve reception. 
One of the applications for this product would be location coverage of a live event in progress. Can you share a key for multiple receivers? Okay, so I think he's asking about uh, encryption. Like, can you have an encrypted transmitter that transmits mm -hmm. the same signal to multiple receivers that have the same encrypted key? You cannot. You okay. cannot. So when you IR sync a transmitter to a receiver, if that re channel has encryption on it, that is where that link happens. Um, and if you were to go sync that transmitter to another channel that had encryption, it would break the prior. Um, so you do need to turn off encryption and then you can have multiple receivers for one transmitter. Um, I'm curious about the beginning of that. I'm not sure that we recommend encryption to improve range or reception. Yeah. That's, there's no, uh, you know, our, our encryption is built into the modulation scheme at the beginning. It's just a, a choice for you to turn it on or off. Um, and mostly turning it off is due to this choice where we say, hey, we want two receivers. There's no latency added. There's no audio difference. There's no range difference with encryption or, or no encryption. Yeah, I would think that in a technical standpoint, the only thing that would happen is maybe a little bit more delay from the programming of the encrypted key. But yeah, like you're saying, reception improvement or, you know, that's going to be the same. Yeah, two milliseconds, um, same RF. Uh, there's no there's no really degradation of anything with encryption or without. And there was one more follow-up question. Uh, also, will legacy Axiant transmitters and other bands be compatible as long as they are in band? So I'm assuming, you know, like all of the transmitters he's wondering about in the shore. Yeah, uh, so uh, just clarify real quick there, there, there are two lines of Axiant, I guess. Axiant Analog was the initial Axiant line that came out, I, I believe seven years ago, maybe, maybe longer. And, and now we have Axiant <clears throat> Digital, which came out just shortly after Axiant Analog. So is, if you're talking about Axiant Digital transmitters, all of the Axiant Digital transmitters are compatible, assuming they're in the right band, correct. Um, Axiant Analog transmitters will not be compatible with the digital line. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, so I think that we left off on battery powering options. Uh, one of the things that, um, you know, in fact, I kind of want to branch out too and just say I love the fact that all of your transmitters have the, you know, the rechargeable batteries and everything. Um, today, yeah. right before we went live, I have uh, one of the transmitters. Oops too many pockets. Um, I've got the ADX1 in my pocket here, and I just love the battery meter in here. It's, I have six hours and 43 minutes left, and I was like, do I need to change it? And I'm just, I'm loving the ease and use of popping them in the chargers and then, you know, swapping them. It just makes everything faster than dealing with batteries. So very, very good battery powering options. I like it. We're very proud of our rechargeable batteries, actually. There's, we could do a, a whole webinar just on those, but the, you know, the quick gist is we, you know, we designed kind of a, our own data chip inside those batteries that communicates to all of our receivers in a lot of ways. So you get current temperature, you get current cycle count, you get current milliamp um, availability. Um, and then most importantly, you get that the hours and minutes readout that you were just talking about, right? right. And, and the next level to that is that that is that's transmitted right through the digital codec. So on this Axiom Digital ADX 5D slot receiver, you can see I've got X amount of time, six hours and six minutes there on the right, three hours and 53 minutes left on the first one. And so where this really comes into play is when you get down to the nitty gritty, right? One bar doesn't give me a lot of information, but 37 minutes tells me, hey, you know, I've got 37 minutes, producer, director, whoever it may be, right? So that I, I have a finite amount of time, which is one bar is just, I, I got to go change it right now. Right? Yeah, exactly. One bar does not tell you if you're going to get through a take or not. <laughs> just five exactly. minutes versus 12 minutes tells you whether or not you have to hold up production. Correct. So uh, that's, Absolutely. yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, even when I started going through all of the menus of not only the transmitters, even the new uh, ADX 5D, the one thing that I loved is that it was just very intuitive, you know, like after a minute and a half, I was like, you know how when you get a new piece of gear and you start fumbling around with it, you're like, dang, no, that's not right. Back up. It took me like a minute and I was like going in and out of the menu so easily um, versus some other manufacturers where you just kind of get lost and you don't really know where you are. Uh, it's very intuitive, very easy to understand. Um, how is the screen in sunlight? I had somebody that asked me off of the live stream about that. The screen and sunlight was a big was a big factor for us in design. Um, there are multiple ways to manipulate your brightness. You can set it to auto, so it will auto sense the light around you and try to compensate automatically. Uh, and then there's low, medium, and high. Uh, the high screen in direct sunlight is fully readable, right? It's a very large, um, beautiful OLED display you can see here with some LED lights for indicators for RF link, uh, quality meter, the Q meter, which is a 
another aspect of Axiom Digital that we haven't really talked about. Um, and then there are audio meter LEDs as well. So um, the screen is a thing of beauty in my opinion, as is our menu structure, very simple and easy to get through. Um, and then on top of that, right, some people will never even touch the front if they integrate channels and wireless work maps, right? Is it all these workflow possibilities for you and your needs? Um, so pretty, pretty confident about that. If you don't love the front menu, hook it up to iOS or hook it up to Workbench and you'll probably love that way. Mm -hmm. yep. For sure. Jason, why don't we go back and talk a little bit more about the back plates and all of the different pieces that you can put on the back of it for you know the sound mixers that are gonna integrate it into their bag or cart or wherever. Totally. Uh, so the first one I've got connected here uh, is the first one on the, on the left there, I suppose. And that's our analog breakout plate. Uh, that's going to be um, a four pin connector that's vertical and most of people go hey what's that one that is for our battery sled so that's what will connect when you put that l type battery sled onto the top gotcha. the next two are the ta3 pin for audio one and two out those are configurable for analog or aes you can choose either uh, and then the last port there is the hiroshi power connector uh, which is fairly common in this industry uh, next up's the DB25. People call it super slot, people call it unislot, whatever it is, but it's a DB25 pin connector uh, that will connect to most of those DB25 receiving third-party integration in, integrated tools. And then the last one's the, the DB15 for um, you know Sony cameras is really what that is for to slot into those cameras. And in fact, that was leading into the next question as I was going to ask, you know, it basically because of all of these different pieces and the different mounts that you have. You can pretty much connect it to anything. Hot shoes, you can put it in sledge, you can put it in Sony cameras because I know they're a little different. Yep. Um, it's versatile. It's we, We've tried to make it as compatible with as many products as we could, right? There's some trade-offs there, but absolutely made it as compatible as we could um, and are continually trying to make it as com compatible as we can. Absolutely. And you know what? I think that the last biggest question, and you already touched on it a little bit for me, uh, but it, it's again working with the wireless workbench and you know the channels app. You know, do you have any uh, any of a demonstration of how that works with the app? Like, you know, for anybody that just doesn't understand, so it's you know the 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 ADX five D is integrated and talking to all of the transmitters, and then the the phone or the mobile device is on a separate chain that's basically talking back and forth like this. Yeah, so it's it's networking. So you've got to find a way to get a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi router connected to your external show, which would be this this 8610 that we talked about. So this is PoE powered with an, with an Ethernet cable. Um, you would take that into a small switch, and then uh, out of that switch, go into a little uh, wireless access point. You can connect directly to an iPad with um, an Ethernet connector now. I believe uh, we have made that function um, possible. And that's for iOS and channels, which is for the iPads or Android devices. Um, and then I can quickly share my screen here for wireless workbench. Um, and I've got the ADX 5D set up here. So this is wireless workbench in the monitor page. This is my two channel um, receiver. So this is actually this receiver wirelessly talking out of this Zigbee antenna on the front that is now talking to that 8610 show link I mentioned. And then that is networked into my computer hardwired. So um, actually, this is a great example. I can RF mute one of these transmitters here. Uh, there goes the ADX1. You can physically see the RF go away on that transmitter. All of that just happened over show link from my laptop that I'm talking to you on um, through the software. So that's kind of the ecosystem of connectivity there. Um, lastly, something that you know a lot of people don't talk about is if you've got one of these ADX 5Ds in your bag and you have this software, you can fire it open and there's the scan that I took, um, you know, just this morning from this two channel slot receiver and wirelessly ingested into this software. Now I've got a live scan of my spectrum from the slot receiver I already have, and I can do a full RF coordination in wireless workbench here for whatever may be on my set. So again, free software, wireless workbench, download it, check it out. We're giving it, we're giving it away. That's amazing, absolutely. We have another question from the audience. Uh, getting back into power, uh, yeah. Jeff Wexler is asking, can the batteries be charged outside of the unit? Are we talking about the transmitters, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know what, I'm assuming, Jeff, that you're talking about the transmitters. So, I mean, I might even be able to piggyback and show them. Depending sure. on the transmitters, they have a bunch of different charger boxes. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know the model number off the, the top of my head. It's like SBC. 
220, I believe that yep, one is. Yeah, 220, exactly. Yep. And so these, I love how they just pop right out. Yep. SBC 210, thank you. Um, and so, you know, these batteries just pop right in the unit. So they have some for the bigger ADX1, which is what I'm using right now. And in fact, to let everyone know, you are listening to a Shure TL46 lavalier going through an ADX1, going into the ADX5D, which is, you know, Fantastic. You're, hearing. you're hearing it right now, live as can be. I love it. Exactly. Um, yeah, there's there's a large amount of charging options for the, the various batteries. That's probably the most mobile and portable one in your hand right there. There are some docking chargers. So that will charge the batteries pulled out of the unit. Um, and then there's docking chargers we have that actually do both. So the base of the docking charger is designed to take either the battery removed from the pack or you can drop the pack. You see these battery contacts here on the back. That pack would just slot right in. Yeah. Um, and then there's also a one RU SBRC, a sure battery rack mount charger that would charge eight batteries removed from their packs um, in one RU. So there's a, a ton of charging op options for these batteries, whatever makes sense for you. Absolutely amazing. I love the fact that, you know, you can throw it in a bag, you can throw it on a camera, you can connect remote antennas if you need to, you can control your transmitters. This is the thing that if when I was working in the field, if I had it, I would be a lot less stressed, I think. <laughs> That's the hope. Um, Simplify the workflow, give everybody the tools, right? And and again, you know, Axiom Digital has been, been around for, for quite a while now. So some of these accessories have have come over time. So there's been a lot of time for this ecosystem and this product line to develop, right? And now we're seeing, uh, you know, us develop into this market. So there's a ton of things in this product line. There's, I think, nine different transmitters. If you talk about our partnership with Quantum Q5X that make the waterproof lavalier, the aqua mic, and then the player mic, which is like a, a rubber soft pliable um, player mic that we see in high, high tier sports applications for athletes to wear. You know, those are all Axiom Digital enabled transmitters now. So there's there's a ton of stuff in this ecosystem. There's a ton of things we've thought of. We've tried to hit all the angles. And now we're rounding out the ecosystem with the slot receiver. You know, a year ago, we dropped the 83, um, the plug-on transmitter, you know, that's essential for this location sound market. So we have a plug-on transmitter. Um, so we're really trying to come at you. There it is. Fantastic. Really trying to hit all the angles and hoping this, this slot, slot receiver rounds it out. Absolutely. We have another question. Uh, what qualifies as a third-party control device? Um, well, anything that is not made by Sure that controls our devices, I would say. Yeah, and I don't... Yeah, absolutely. I'll go with Copy that. that. Yeah, let's lead with that. There you go. Yep. There's your answer. Well, very good. Well, I think we're out. Uh, if anyone has a question from the audience, please let us know. We'd love to answer them for you. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving the ADX 5D from all of my tests in here. In fact, uh, if anyone is local to the True Audio Los Angeles area, we do have one in store. So if you'd like to do a listen test, come on by. We'll plug it in for you and let you hear it. Um, I am very, very happy with this. Yeah. Exciting. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I would love to have one just in the in the studio. So I just have two transmitters just charged and ready to go. I don't have to deal with all these cables. <laughs> Absolutely. We're excited. I know it's been a long time coming. Today's a, a really exciting day for us at Sure. And obviously, thank you for being here, Thomas, True Audio. You guys have been great partners in beta testing and knowledge and information and all the things in, in this new journey for us. So we appreciate you guys. Always here for you. And all of our sales reps are standing by. So if you guys are interested in talking about them, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to purchase one, you can go ahead and give one of your sales reps a call and you know they'll help you out. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today for this True Audio Presents on the Shure Accent Digital Portable Receiver, the ADX 5D. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you see more videos like this in the future. And give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about Shure Accent Digital Wireless. Take Thanks, care. Thomas. See you, Anytime. Everybody. Have a good one.